Interwebs. I would like to talk to you today about our induction cooktop. We decided earlier this year to redo our kitchen and one of the first things that we decided to replace was the uh, traditional electric range that we had and we wanted to replace it with either gas or induction and for me this was hands down no contest. We went with induction and here I'm here to tell you why. But as I get along into that what I want to do is uh, show you why to begin with, induction is, is great. So what I have here is a 12 quart stock pot. And as you'll see in a moment, when I bring the camera over to it, we're almost full, right below the rivets, full. There we go. And the water is just uh, a little more than room temperature. That's kind of what's coming out of the tap right now, 84 degrees, it's a nice warm day here. so. All of the water is hot. And as I put this back down and recenter it for you. Oh, let me come over here first. We're going to put this up onto a mode called Speed Boost, high or boost mode. And in this mode, you'll see we've got an indicator on the front that's cycling rather quickly. I'll show you the difference with those later. We'll put our lid on because we are bringing it to a boil. This is a uh, probably a little excessive amount of water to bring to a boil, but if you had to do a lot of pasta, for instance, that would be a, a fairly good amount to use, I suspect. So we'll just park this here for the moment and let that go. So you can see by our little clock that we have over here on the side, it's somewhere around 17 after or so. And uh, hopefully this will be to a full and complete boil in about 12 minutes. I've done this before and that's about how long it'll take, but. I tell people bringing a pot of water to boil in this size in 12 minutes and they're shocked. So I first found out about induction uh, some time ago, maybe back in the late 80s or the early 90s and I thought it was a really a great idea. But in about 2004, I bought one of these just to play around with the idea. Uh, this is a what they call a portable hob. It's made by Burton. It's an 1800 watt portable induction cooktop. It works off of 110, so you can take this anywhere that you would want to go and uh, plug it in and cook. So you don't need any special power for it, just a one, 110 15 volt or 15 amp outlet and you're good to go. And I cooked a lot with this. It was really a lot of fun. And using this just with 110, I could bring this same full pot of water to a full boil in about uh, 24, 25 minutes or so. Um, and now we've cut that time in half because now we're running off of 220. And this range actually has two, um, two elements, quote unquote elements, that will run in the speed boost mode. So on the, uh, we'll bring you back over here again. On the top of the range itself, we have these little crosshairs here. And this kind of centers where the induction range actually is. So there is a, a coil that's underneath here that's the magnet. And the two front elements both have larger coils than the two back elements. And so that's important because you have smaller pans and you have larger pans. So let's talk about the pans for a moment. Let me put you back down. I promise not to do this whole up and down thing too much. So one of the things that I hear people say is you have to have special cookware. Well. That may be true, but it doesn't have to be excessively expensive cookware. Um, it just has to be something that has a bottom that a magnet will steal. So I just see, uh, stick to. So I just happen to have a fancy little magnet here, this little troll, cute guy. Um, and as long as he sticks to the bottom, he's fine. This is where the steel is. So an induction cooktop will pick up this and it will work with this. Now, if it was aluminum, like the sides are, it wouldn't stick to it, right? So I just can't make them stick there, but once we get around to the bottom, it's good. This is a really, it's a really cheap pan. Uh, one of these copper, quote unquote, copper pans. It's, I don't know, copper painted aluminum, because it's just awful. Anyway, this actually works on uh, this induction top. So this is one that we're keeping. This pan, on the other hand, um, this looks like not too far different from this. It doesn't have the same bulginess factor to it, but it's all aluminum, including this base plate at the bottom. 
it's an aluminum base plate. Now, aluminum heats very evenly and it distributes its heat. That's one of the reasons why uh, manufacturers like to use aluminum because when you start heating it, that heat spreads out evenly and quickly across the body. Steel does as well. There are ways to work around it, but this is why we have aluminum pans. It's really, really cheap and it'll do the job. It's great on a gas range or a regular electric range, but it's not good with induction. You have to have something that has metal that sticks to it. Now, um, here's another very inexpensive, very inexpensive pan. The magnet sticks to this, barely sticks to the side. It'll, it'll do the job. But as long as it sticks to the bottom, we're good. Um, I bought this set of pans. This is part of the same line. Uh, they're called Belgique from some place like Macy's or Dillard's some number of years ago. And uh, they've been great. Once again, as long as it sticks to the bottom, we're good. Um, people have asked about cast iron. Well, you know, the nice thing about cast iron is magnets stick to it. So this is going to work, and I'll show you later. The other thing um, also is carbon steel pans. This is a mat for carbon steel frying pan. Oops, sorry. There's our little guy sticking there again. So these are all going to work. You'll see that in just a moment. Um, one of the nice things about the way this heats up is, uh, once again, this is a, the Belgique. It's part of this same collection, which I spent 150 bucks for, so it's not terribly expensive. Um, it does have this nice plate on the bottom. There's a couple of different things that are going on on the inside. It heats very, very quickly, and we'll show you that right now. So I'm going to set this stainless steel pan here. We'll bring our uh, little camera over, and I'm going to take some uh, some room temperature water, and we're just going to pour this in. And just to give you an idea about how evenly this will heat, I'm going to bring this front burner into the speed mode also. So when this comes to a boil, what you're going to see is you're going to see it boil almost all the way across the surface all at once. And it won't take long, as you're going to see momentarily. And then I'll show you how safe it is. So, you know, even though this is coming to a boil right now, I can actually put my hands right here at the bottom. Now, you can see there's this little kind of a ring that's forming. I don't have this centered over the entire um, element. But look how evenly that's, and look how quickly that came to a boil. So you will have to relearn to cook, especially if you're accustomed to cooking with um, a, a, a regular electric range. So the other nice thing is when you go to turn this off, that's off, it reacts immediately and just stops, okay? So that's our frying pan test. Let's go to um, another little test I have. So here is, once again, another little Belgique pan that I've got here. And um, I wanted to do this with this little paper towel. So remember what I said, this is not a source of heat, okay? And this is um, about a cup and a half of, once again, this room temperature water. And I'm going to put this on speed boost. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, we have the, uh, the quick pulsing uh, red light here. By the way, when you're in speed boost mode, it'll run in this mode for 10 minutes. And at the end of 10 minutes, it'll go to its regular high mode. So we haven't quite achieved 10 minutes yet with our large pan of water over here. Um, and as you can see in our little pan, we've already got uh, the little eyes, what do they call those? Um, crab eyes, I guess, or shrimp eyes. Uh, that tells you what temperature the water is. But you can see this is coming up to a boil really quickly. Once again, the induction is not a source of heat. It's the action of the metal um, and the magnet underneath. And look how aggressively that's boiling. But yet, our paper towel is just fine. Okay, so let's turn that off. 
All right, so we'll bring this back up again. Sorry about that little sharp movement, folks. So let's get that helmet off of here. Somebody asked about, uh, so the safety, the safety issue, that's really, really a big thing. Um, there is residual heat on the glass, but that's heat that's transferred from the pan down into the glass. But as you can see, this, which is coming to its full boil um, here shortly, um, I can set my hand right beside the pan on less than a quarter of an inch from it, and it's not uncomfortable on my fingertips. I don't advise that, by the way, so don't do that at home, okay? Um, let's talk about the cast iron for a moment. So I have a nice big cast iron pan here. One of the things about cast iron is that it's slow to come to temperature, but it'll hold that temperature for a long time. So um, here's about uh, four cups of water. We'll just roll that in here. I'm gonna put that on the high boost mode, and we're gonna let that rock and roll for a few minutes. So, once again, you can see the heating uh, coils, where they're kind of located, and that's actually kind of nice to know, but it might be a little disconcerting at first, especially when you're working with something like cast iron. It's important to remember that that heat travels slowly through the cast iron, but once it's established itself, it'll sit there for a long, long time. So, let me bring this over again for you to see. You can see our element where that's uh, heating up. And once again, we're in high speed mode. So there's our uh, indicator at the bottom that we're on high. You can see over here now, this has reached the 10 minute point. And so now it doesn't have that fast pulsing. So the speed, boot mode, speed boost mode only runs for a few moments. Um, and our water is very nearly coming to a boil in there. So if you were heating something up, like you wanted to do some blackened seafood, for instance, um, you could do that. You just have to make sure that the uh, entire area of the pan, the surface of the pan that you want to heat up, is going to be evenly across the bottom, uniformly heated. So as I let this go, you'll see that it, um, will, this donut ring will become larger and larger. So this pot, which we turned on just about 12 minutes ago, is now at a full rolling boil. So we're going to turn that off, and as you can see, it pretty much stops instantly. And that's one of the things about electric ranges, the traditional electric range with the coils, that you don't really see happening. They don't really stop instantly. They, those coils take a while to cool down. So, um, you know, once again, it's another kind of a safety feature there. But as you can see, we're getting a nice, hot, even uh, space all the way across the bottom of this. So does this work with um, other pans? Absolutely. Now we're coming to a full boil on this cast iron. And if I were to leave this here longer as, as the temperature of the cast iron itself travels further across, you'll see this donut ring of heat expanding. You know, this is only, I can still touch this edge here. Don't advise it. The handle's actually still pretty cool, but we do have this full rolling boil going on on the inside. So, you know, if you're frying in cast iron and you've got, you know, a couple of cups of uh, oil in there, I think you're gonna be able to find that you can control this heat very, very, very well. All right, so um, other than cast iron, there are uh, several other things that this will work on as well, including uh, carbon steel. Try to get this back down here. There we go. Uh, and carbon steel, people will often see that in a couple of different areas. This is a mat for carbon steel um, pan. Uh, it's warped on the bottom. But even though it's warped, I can still use this on this top. It, and it still will heat just as evenly as this will. Um, when I try to use this on an electric range, 
that's a bit of a problem because it really kind of only heats up where it's touching the surface. But with this, it doesn't. It's more evenly throughout across the bottom. So this is really a lot of fun to use. Another carbon to steel piece that people will use um, often will be a wok. And woks do like to have high temperatures. Um, and so carbon steel is a great thing for them. This is a very inexpensive wok. And a wok base is smaller, but if you set it correctly on the crosshairs, you should be able to get this to turn on. So we're seeing the um, we're seeing the element in the speed boost mode here. I can actually feel the heat from the bottom. You can actually already see smoke coming up from the residual oil that I had left uh, in there previously. And if I go to splash and we'll water in here. So yeah. So with even wok cooking, you can, you can get this up to those really high temperatures that allow you to uh, make wok cooking the fabulous thing that it actually is. So those are the great things about this. This particular one is made by LG. I don't know what the model number is. I'll try to find out and put that up on the screen. But those are the things that we like about it. It's extremely safe, first and foremost, because it's not a heat source, not like the flames from gas, and not like the heating element from a traditional electric range. Um, the great thing about that is that it tends to stay cooler in the kitchen as a whole. The heat is radiating out from the pans, not from the gas flames or from the electric elements. And it is very reactive, much like gas. When you turn gas off, it stops whatever it is very, very quickly. So does this. Electric ranges have the problem of when you turn them off, they have to cool down. And if you're leaving the pan on there, you can get a lot of residual cooking that you don't want. You have to remove the pan from the surface. So um, that's why we like it. We really enjoy it. Um, I've been doing a lot of fun cooking, things I've never tried before because of the issue with how quickly the range would react to how I was controlling the temperature. And uh, we even have an 88-year-old in here who is truly finding this a lot of fun to cook with. So she's getting really excited about um, playing around and revisiting ideas that she may have tried some years ago but were frustrating to work with because you know she was cooking on, a, on an electric range before. And she's not comfortable with gas at all. So. She's like, she has that old school idea that, you know, if there's something that goes wrong, the whole neighborhood's gonna blow up. Um, you don't really have to worry about that as much. It's not an issue as it used to be, but, and I do enjoy cooking with gas, but I really love the, everything about this, the convenience, the safety, the cleanup, it's just great. And the fact that I don't have to get really expensive pans. As long as I know that a magnet will stick to the bottom of the pan, that pan is gonna work on this range. So that's my take on induction cooktops. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great afternoon.